Welcome to the Best Life Podcast, where we here at Ultra Federal Credit Union are always working to help you live your best life. I'm Tony Beyer, Financial Literacy Coordinator at Ultra, and today we wanted to focus on a very important topic, and that is staying safe while staying connected online. For many, this pandemic has changed the way many of us are living, working, even socializing, much of it now online or on mobile devices. Now, for more information on how to do that while protecting our accounts, information, and devices, we are joined by Ian Nicholson, our Senior Information Security Administrator and Internet Expert. Thanks again for taking a couple moments to be with us, Ian. Well, hey, Tony. I'm glad to be here talking with you. You know, I, I need a break from work sometimes. You know, I'm a huge nerd, so anytime I get to talk about computers, uh, that makes me happy. <laughs> Good to hear. Thank you so much. Uh, I know you're our internet expert, and we want to talk about security. And I know it's probably going to start with passwords. We're supposed to have a unique password for everything. I'm trying. I make passwords. I can't remember them all the time. I have variations of a few passwords. I know I should be a lot better. What can we do to try to uh, mix up our passwords and be a little more secure online? Tony, I think that's a great point. I just want to say, you know, you're not alone. The average person is really not as secure as they could be. And that's not any one person's fault, right? We don't make it easy to be secure when it comes to computers. I think that computers are the only field where the people involved are less trusting uh, of their industry than the average person on the street. You know, if you talk to an architect, they'll tell you that a building is very unlikely to fall down. An airplane designer is going to tell you that airplanes are just about the safest place you can be. But if you talk to a computer security person, we're very paranoid about computers. And that's because it is so easy to make a mistake. When you're talking about passwords, we used to tell people, oh, change your password every every 90 days. You know, make sure that it's really hard to guess, you know, make it completely random. But the problem is that people can't remember those passwords. Right. It's very difficult to remember a 15 character password that's nothing but random letters, numbers and symbols. And so, you know, in the past several years, the computer security industry has, has realized that we screwed up. We made a mistake. We were giving people bad advice. And the new advice that we tell people is, hey, you should be using a password manager. That is a program on your computer or on your cell phone that remembers your passwords for you and can generate strong passwords and in most instances can actually type them in for you. For example, I, I have a password manager on my phone that will generate a 20-character random number, letter, symbol, password for me, and it can type it into any web page that I need it to. And so I have no idea what any of my passwords are, <laughs> except for the one password that unlocks my password manager, ah. and that's key. Okay. Um, and the nice thing about those is uh, that you know I, I have an iPhone. Uh, my password manager unlocks my fingerprint. Oh, so okay. I don't even really have to know that password either. Uh, of course I do. I wrote it down and I stuck it in a locked box somewhere. And I won't tell you where that locked box is. <laughs> Makes but, sense. Yeah. you know, in case that my family needs to get into my passwords, you know, for whatever reason, and I'm not available, you know, they they do have that capability. But it's, it's certainly not something that anyone's going to be able to do uh, <laughs> very easily. Not using the same password for everything. Duly noted right after this. Getting myself a password manager. Awesome. Because... Like I said, I will change my password, you know, for work. You know, we have to do that all the time for good reasons. Good reasons. Thank you. Now, you know, usually I have to call our help desk by the afternoon because I forgot what I changed it to. So good to know for uh, all the passwords that we all have. Look into a password manager. Awesome. Is there anything else um, as far as logging into accounts that can help keep those like, more secure, like your your email or, or you know Google or, you know, anything else like that? That's a great question. And yes, you know, even if you are using a unique password for every single account that you have, which again, you should, and you should be storing in a password manager, uh, sometimes those passwords can get compromised. You know, maybe you, maybe you get phished and you type that password into a phishing page. And if the only thing you've got protecting that account is your password, you're in trouble there. Yeah. So what I also recommend is that wherever possible, people set up multi-factor authentication, which is also called two-factor authentication. And what that is, you know, when we talk about factors, there's really three factors. There's something you know, which is what a password is. There's something that you have, which is usually something like your cell phone or uh, sometimes a thumb drive. And then there's something that you are, which is where biometric authentication comes in. And generally, when you set up 
multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication, you're going to be getting a code, a short, usually a six-digit numeric code sent to your cell phone via text message. There are also apps that can generate those codes as well. And really, it depends on what the website or account in question is doing. World of Warcraft, for example, <laughs> for those, you know, for people that remember that, the, that was a really... Wow, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not going to lie and say that I did not have an account. I was involved in that when I was uh, back in high school. <laughs> it's one of but, the, It was uh, one of the most popular things like in the world, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, you're definitely not alone. It was huge. Yeah, I remember the advertisements on TV for it, which <laughs> just blew my mind. <laughs> but there was a huge problem with people stealing World of Warcraft accounts. And so the company that made World of Warcraft said, OK, we're going to implement multi-factor authentication. And there was an app on your phone. And it would generate this short one-time password. And when you logged in to your account with your username and your password, it would also prompt you for this second password. And the only way you could get that second password was if you were holding on to your phone. And so that functioned as a second factor, so to speak. You know, generally these days, like I said, they get sent to you via text message. But you know, for big sites like Google, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, they will also allow you to use an application to generate that on your phone, and that's a little more secure. But in any case, even if you're getting those one-time passwords sent to you on your phone, that's still way better than not having them at all. Oh, makes sense. Who knew uh, keeping your stuff secure was so complicated? But that's I'm so glad we've got an expert like you. And again, we're talking to Ian Nicholson. He is the Senior Information Security Administrator for Ultra Federal Credit Union. So happy to have you here. And again, I know you're busy, but I get on my phone probably monthly. I know my personal computer all the time. It wants me to install updates. It's kind of a pain. How important is keeping, you know, your technology up to date? You know, unfortunately, it's not as easy as people would like. I am guilty of that as well. Sometimes I get prompted to update my phone when I'm right in the middle of, right. you know, messaging someone or, <laughs> or looking something up online and I just say, whatever, remind me later. You know, that's, I, I, I'm not going to pretend I'm perfect there. But the last I heard, 70 to 80% of all the people that got hacked got hacked because they were not up to date on their software. And if they had been wow. up to date, they would not have been hacked. Wow. So it's, it is so important for people to update their systems. Personally, I was talking about my phone. I went into the settings for iOS and I told it, all right, update automatically. If I'm asleep, and it's 3 a.m., just go ahead and run that update. Odds are I'm not even going to notice. And I do that with my computers, too. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's a little frustrating, but it's much less frustrating than getting hacked, I'll tell you that. The other thing to keep in mind about software updates is that you do want to update as much as possible. I've seen a lot of people who are still running Windows 7, <laughs> which is no longer getting updates. Or maybe they're running Windows 8, which is still getting updates from Microsoft, but there are a lot of things that make Windows 10 really, really good that Windows 8 just isn't going to get. So I encourage everyone I know to upgrade to Windows 10 as soon as they can. I was going to say, if you're rocking Windows XP, you probably want to update that, I imagine, right? <laughs> that is absolutely correct. Uh, if you <laughs> if you have Windows XP plugged into the internet, congratulations, <laughs> you have already been hacked. I can pretty much say that for cert <laughs> with certainty. <laughs> So after this, not only am I doing the password manager, I'm updating all my stuff. Excellent. And I saw a story not too long ago talking about the FBI's uh, Internet Crimes Complaint Center, IC3. They have received the same amount of complaints in 2020, six months into the year, as they did in all of 2019. So phishing and things like that are, are definitely way up on the rise. What are some things that people can do to protect themselves from phishing scams and things going on online there? The best thing that anyone can do to uh, keep themselves safe is trust their gut. If an email doesn't seem right, there's a reason. That's your subconscious saying, hey, something is up. I tell people all the time, if you get, <laughs> if you get an email saying, hey, you've won, the, you've won the lottery, or hey, I'm your long lost you know, great uncle and I've got money for you, or, hey, here's a job you can work three hours a day and make $50,000 a year. That's probably not true. Uh, unfortunately, I otherwise, <laughs> I would have a job. The other thing to watch out for is if you get an email saying, hey, click this link to do something, 
really be careful about clicking a link. If I get an email from Google or Facebook saying, hey, I need you to click this link and log in to do something, I'm not going to click that link. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that website first and then log in because that way I know that I'm logging into the correct web page. And that's actually where a good password manager comes in because my password manager, it will tell me if I'm at the right page. It will refuse to auto fill in a password if I go to a website that looks like Google but isn't. So that's a that's a great way to uh, ensure that you're only logging into sites that you that you know and trust. Another scam that I've seen a lot is uh, email that people receive that says, "Hey, I've hacked into your computer and I took control of your webcam and I saw you know all sorts of salacious activity and." You need to pay me hundreds of dollars or I'll share that with your entire social circle. And I'm very cautious. I never say that anything is 100% anything, but I can pretty much guarantee you that, no, they have not taken control of your webcam. You know, that is a very common scam because people are so likely to pay. But if somebody emails you and says, I'm going to publish this embarrassing information about you to your social circle just delete it. If you're really concerned, what you can do is you can take the first several sentences of that email and punch it into Google. And I can almost guarantee you that the very first hit is going to be a news article about that exact phishing email. That's something that I have people ask me about probably monthly. It's very common. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Maybe don't do salacious things in front of your (laughs) webcam either, but uh, anyway, good to know. I should add that if you, you know, if you are concerned, and this is something I do, is I have a, a little plastic gizmo that I mounted over my webcam, and it has a has a little slide on it that I can slide to cover my webcam if I want. You know, that is is always very. It gives me a lot of comfort. You know, uh, I've never had to use it fortunately, but just knowing it's there is nice, and it's about you know anywhere between fifty cents and two or three bucks. So it's a really good return on your investment there just for your peace of mind. Absolutely. Excellent. And again, we're talking to Ian Nicholson. He's the Senior Information Security Administrator for Ultra. I know you got to get going. Uh, Just got one more question. You've answered so many so far, so much to know about this topic. Has there anything that's kind of, I don't know, blown your mind or really surprised you about information security or about the internet that you've learned in your role or your experience with information security? That's a really interesting question. If I had to pick just one thing, I think it would be how much of the underlying infrastructure of the internet is handled by people who just feel like it's the right thing to do. People who are out there writing the computer programs that our internet traffic depends on to get you know from point A to point B, and they're doing it because they like to do it. There's not really a profit motive there. That's called open source software. Hmm. And it just, it really makes me optimistic about <laughs> the the future of humanity, that there are people <laughs> out there who just want to make something to make the world a better place. I love it that we're ending on a positive note, talking about all these things that can happen to you and all these people trying to get into your systems, your emails, your accounts, your all these things, but there are good people in there and there is good in the world. And we, we need to hear that uh, a little bit more, especially in a time right now. Thank you so much, Ian. A lot of great information. Again, anything you want to add here at the end, but thank you so much for your time and your expertise. Tony, it's been a pleasure talking to you. and You have a great and healthy rest of your day. I appreciate it. You too, Ian. Thank you so, so much. Again, that was Ian Nicholson, Senior Information Security Administrator here at Ultra with some great tips and advice on how to protect yourself and your money online. That's going to do it for the podcast. Thank you so much for taking a moment to listen to the Best Life podcast presented by Ultra Federal Credit Union. We'd love to hear your thoughts, feedback, and especially questions that we can answer on future podcasts. You can send those to me at tjbuyer at ultra.org. You can subscribe to the Best Life Podcast pretty much wherever podcasts can be found so that you never miss an episode. We appreciate you taking a moment to learn more on how you can live your best life. Have a great day, be well, and we'll talk to you next time.